everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company, and I am going to show you today a nice, simple uh, bracelet design idea that anyone can do from beginner to advanced. It's also a nice, quick, yet elegant, and one that looks like you took a lot of time bracelet to make, um, especially if you're following along with me here when this is produced here at the holiday season. We are going to be making a triple strand bracelet, but actually going from a triple strand to a single to a triple to a single. For this, I am using three strands of the two by three millimeter Potomac Crystal Rondelles, and then a bigger strand of Rondelles. If you do need any of these materials, on the left-hand side here, we'll do a little drop-down menu for you that has little pop-ups that you can uh, link to online. So if you do need to get any of these materials, if we can help you out, ship anything out to you, click on that there. If you are on a mobile phone, underneath the video here, there's a little description box that says what the video is about and details about the video. There's a little button that says show more with some down arrows. If you click on that, it'll give you links to purchase the different products that we're using here today. So this skill is a basic beading skill, but it looks more advanced than that, which is kind of cool. We are going to be using, like I said, some Potomac Crystal Rondelles. The Potomac Crystal Rondelles that we're using are two by three millimeter. And because it's the holiday season, I decided to go with kind of holiday colors. I have the Garnet AB two by three, the Olivine, and then the Metallic Green Iris that I'm gonna be working with. I have one strand of each of those beads. And in conjunction with that, I'm going to be using the Olivine Check Glass Rondelle. And this is a fire polished rondelle in 7 by 11 millimeter. To clasp the bracelet, I'm going to use a really cute, I'll open it up for you, a really cute pewter clasp here. This is, I think, my favorite of all the little holiday clasps. This is a little gingerbread house that has a little candy cane for its toggle bar and it comes with a little gingerbread man as the charm. So it's that fun holiday um, cuteness that you wanna add to your bracelet. It's also fun colors that you can kind of wear them more often uh, than just Christmas because it's kind of that muted red and the muted greens. Um, if that's the case, you may not wanna use the gingerbread, but I think he's so cute and I wanted to be able to use him in a video. In addition to my beads and my toggle, I also have two jump rings here, and these are six millimeter, 20 gauge or 18 gauge will work jump rings. You can use a couple different sizes too, that's up to you. And then I have six two millimeter crimp tubes, two by twos, one and a half by one and a half, either of those will work. You can even use crimp beads if you want, although I'm much more of a fan of the look of the tube, so that's kind of up to you. In addition to that, we are going to be stringing on some beading wire. Whether or not you want to use, um, I'm using Beadalon here, just something that we have in the store, 7 strand, 0 0.018. Um, I usually like to use 49 strand. Anything works though for this because it's not going to be getting a ton of wear and tear. It's a holiday bracelet. For this, you are looking at about 30 inches of wire, three pieces at 10 inches each. That's gonna give you enough to kind of play with and to bulk up the middle in between our larger rondelles. As far as, or as, far as tools to have handy, I have my needle nose pliers. If you like to use a crimping pliers, you would also wanna have those handy as well. And then I have a pair of wire cutters handy. That's gonna be used to cut my wire. The other thing, if you want to, if you don't want to start right at the end of the bracelet and you'd rather start further on long and then go back and put the ends on, you may want to use some bead stoppers too. Those are great to have on hand. You can also do the same style with a stretchy bracelet, so that's another idea. If you did want to use a stretch in order to get through this bead here, you need the 0.5 millimeter stretchy string to put three strands through that one bead. I'm going to be doing it again with this little gingerbread toggle because I really like the way that he looks. So to get started, go ahead and cut apart your strands as well as your three feet or your 30 feet rather, sorry, 30 inches of your beading wire, whether or not you're using uh, 49 or 19 or seven strand, doesn't really matter. But go ahead and cut three pieces of 10 inches of your wire and then also uh, cut apart your strands too. So to get started, the first thing that I've actually done is I've gone ahead and opened up to my jump rings by pulling them back to the side and connected my little gingerbread man to the gingerbread house. If you want to, you can keep that charm further off and we can attach it somewhere later. That's kind of up to you. 
In addition to that, I did attach another jump ring onto my candy cane. If you are not a big fan of the jump rings or you worry that they may open up, you can use a split ring and connect in that way as well. If you'd rather, you can actually just connect right to the ends, but you'll still need a split ring or a jump ring in order to connect to your little gingerbread man. I have my crimp beads sitting here and my pieces of wire cut. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually attach my wire to my end here. To do so, add one of your crimp beads on, and then we're gonna put on our little candy cane there. Bending the wire back through the crimp tube, we're gonna push that up next to the candy cane, leaving just a little bit of a tail. When I push that up and when I don't see a lot of extra wire, but when the wire is not too tight that it's rubbing against that crimp tube, I'm gonna go ahead, put the wire so it's laying side by side through the crimp tube and not crossing over, and just do a nice flat crimp. If you do want to use a crimping pliers, this would be the point to use the crimping pliers. I tend to teach a lot of new people and a lot of beginners, and I think there's more error in the crimp pliers than there are in just using the flat nose. And the look doesn't bother me. If it does bother you, you can always use crimp covers as well. So we're going to attach three strands in the same manner, putting on a crimp tube, going through the clasp, and running the wire back through that crimp tube. Push the crimp tube then up near the project, just adding or having a just a little bit extra wire there. Go ahead, get it in place, and then flatten it out. There's two, and I'm going to get my third one on. And this is going to be the same fashion that we use for the ending or to do the actual ending clasp. On goes my little crimp bead. Wire goes through, press that crimp bead up near the clasp there, and go ahead and crimp down. If you do have a three millimeter crimp tube, you could do um, all three strands in one crimp tube. That's kind of up to you. The only thing that I don't like is I think that um, they don't hold as well. So that's kind of your prerogative, which one you want to do. At this point, I'm going to put the crimp beads and the gingerbread man back a little bit there and go ahead and cut apart my strands. Keeping my strands in little piles, you can choose if you want to, to mix up the beads. I'm gonna keep them in with their own color. You can decide exactly while you're making this how many beads you wanna do and when you wanna put on your big bead. That can really change and vary. This is more just a design idea for you that I said, again, you can use with tons of different things. You could even use it with seed beads if you wanted to. So I have my little clasp here and my wires all coming out. I'm gonna grab each individual wire at a time and I'm gonna add six of that color of my bead. So I have six of that olivine crystal. I'm gonna add six on the wire. I'm going to continue them by letting those all drop down next to my clasp there. Pick up another strand and put on six of my garnet AB. Those six then will go on to the wire. And the wire, if you haven't worked with beading wire or beading cable before, um, I use Beadalon wire and cable, and it almost acts like a needle end, so you don't actually need to have a needle on. I'm going to grab the third strand here, pick up that green iris, and drop that on. Again, in the quantity of six. And now that all three strands have six beads on, we're gonna push them all down next to the clasp. At the end here, I'm going to feed the beads over that extra wire. So the first couple beads will have two strands of wire going through 
the middle of them. So just starting out with those olivine. If you need to, you can sometimes kind of twist the bead a little bit. Or even if you need to, you can go in and do another cut on the end of the wire. Sometimes the wire will get um, a little bit of a bald end to be able to push the beads down. Once we get the beads over the end of our wire, we're going to come back and show you how to gather up. Now that my beads are all together here, I have those three strands of six and they're covering up all of those extra little wires. Grab those three strands together and we're going to put on one of our check glass beads. You could use lamprick glass, you can use check glass, you could use gemstones if you wanted to. And all I'm going to do then after the bead is just pull each strand one by one to make sure that it's nice and tight around those beads. You can see how it's starting to kind of pillow out there or push out a little bit. That's the cool effect that's going to happen throughout this bracelet. After you put on your check glass bead, you're going to go ahead and separate out your strands again. Put on six more beads on each strand. So this one here, I'm putting that olivine bead on. Like I said, if you want to, you could also do this with seed beads and a bigger bead. After you put the six on one strand, you're going to put six on the next strand of a different color. So we'll use that ruby color. And we're going to continue on them, adding in six beads on each, and then going ahead and popping on the crystal or the check rondelle over all three strands. Continue that continuously on your bracelet. As you're going along and doing each strand, you can see how fun it looks and how pretty it looks doing the different strands right into the bigger strand. You will see some wire, and if you don't want to see a little bit of the beading wire, which for me doesn't matter because it's a silver color, the clasp is silver, that's kind of up to you. Um, if you don't want to see the wire, you may want to pick up some 15 OC beads and put those in right after the crystal so that way as it comes together, you don't see that wire. It is, however, important that as you're doing it, that you pull after each one of your beads, pull each individual strand. What that will do is tighten up the strands. You can see right here as I pull the last one. It'll tighten up the strands and push those strands so that way they are getting tightened up along the bracelet. When you get to the end of the bracelet, you have three strands coming out of that one olivine bead. If you do need it a little bit longer, I have on uh, seven olivine beads. If you do want a little bit longer or you want it a little bit less complicated than the beginning, you can start with a one olivine bead or end with the three beads separate. I'm gonna end with this olivine bead, olivine bead, excuse me, um, so that way when I have the bracelet on, it kind of looks like the pattern continues the whole way around. At the end, you're just gonna take each strand individually, and I cut way more than 10 inches, so I've got a lot of extra wire, and you're just gonna attach it right to your loop. Run the wire then back through that crimp tube and back through that check glass bead. It'll start to get tight through the check glass bead. My suggestion is just to come out right after the check glass bead and pull the wire out. Because I am doing so, I can even take two pieces of wire up through one crimp tube. And then back down through that same crimp tube as well. So that way I don't need all three here at the end. That's kind of up to you if you want to use the three to keep consistent or just two. It's purely an aesthetics thing. And then that last one will come down through that crimp tube. Go ahead then and pull those wires one at a time. Push the crimp bead down next to the bead as close as you can. Pull those extra wires out, again, one at a time, and that'll tighten up the wires along the end. Once you have the wires nice and tight, go ahead and crimp down on that. I'm going to tighten up just a little bit here. And 
and cut off that extra wire. I'm going to go ahead then and repeat doing one more crimp tube and repeat that extra little crimping technique. What also looks cute is if you take a head pin and make a little dangle too in some of your crystals to hang those down as well. I'm going to go through that loop again. And the reason I added the extra loop is because if I don't add the extra loop, um, one, I don't have anywhere for my gingerbread man to hang out in. And two, it just gets really tight going around um, the actual piece without going through, when you're going through the gingerbread and not just through the loop. So I'm going to go through, oops. And this guy, I managed to get the gingerbread in between my two wires, so I'm going to feed it back out. Move my ginger man and set him free. Go back through the loop here. And back down through the crimp tube. If you are using a .015 wire, you can get all three strands through a two millimeter crimp tube. So that's kind of up to you. And again, you can start with the one, you can end with the same, it's kind of up to you. And just give a nice little crimp and cut off the extra wire. That wire cutters flat side down to get the cut as close as you can. Again, if you're a person that likes to use wire protectors or wire guards, certainly use those as well. That's up to you. And when you're done, you have this fun bracelet. I have a tiny wrist, so it's gonna look big on me. But you have this fun bracelet where the candy cane actually goes through the house of the toggle and actually hangs out there right along the end with your gingerbread man hanging out there as well. So you can play around with the design and the fun idea of it using the three strands going into one and just a nice simple holiday gift idea that looks like it took a lot of time and it looks like it was complicated, but it's going to be really quick and really easy to finish up your project. It's a good thing if you are a um, seed bead artist, but you realize that you don't have enough time to make every one seed bead projects. Um, this is a good one for you to do that kind of still gets that look, that seed bead look, but is done in a fraction of the time. Again, if you do need any of these materials, you can go back to the beginning of the video to the little drop down menu, or again, underneath the video to the little description, hit that show more button and you'll get links to all of these as well. You can also check us out um, online at potomacbeads.com and go right to our website, or you can also visit, uh, subscribe to this change, or in addition, subscribe to this page, excuse me. That way you'll get regular updates on different projects that we do, like this fun little holiday bracelet, as well as um, new things that we have coming for you, new products that came out and are available, as well as regular update videos from us. You can also stay connected with us by joining our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Ask to become a member there and interact with a wonderful community of people that love to make jewelry, love to bead, and are some great artists there. Interact with them and touch base as well. You can also always visit us on Facebook and on Instagram. And remember to give a like out to Potomac Bead Company. And thanks so much for watching, everybody. Enjoy making this little holiday trio bracelet. Mm -hmm.